And welcome back to the program. This year, the Atlanta Botanical Gardens Amphibian Conservation Program has initiated a Metro Atlanta Amphibian Monitoring Program, also known as MAAMP. It's in Fulton, DeKalb, Cobb, and Gwinnett counties, and the goal is to better understand the population trends of the 17 species of frog, 14 species of salamander native to Metro Atlanta. Mark Mandika joins us now from the Atlanta Botanical Gardens. Thank you for being on the program. Thank you for having me. So what do we have here and what is this program all about, Mark? Uh, well, what we have here is a spotted salamander. Okay. It's probably, if I had to say, my favorite species of the uh, Metro Atlanta amphibian species. This is a salamander that occurs right here inside the perimeter. That's not something I've seen walking down the street. No, it's they're uh, pretty <laughs> dormant for most of the year. But during their breeding, se breeding season, they collect in large numbers. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. All right, let's yeah, do it. I, you got to explore a little bit here. <laughs> yeah. So tell me a little bit about these little guys. I love the spots and how shiny. Look at that. Yeah, they're an, an incredible species. Oh, he's going to go up my sleeve here. Yeah. <laughs> Something and new to explore. This is a she. This is oh, a this she. is a she. Yes. Excuse yeah. me, lady. <laughs> You're a beauty. Um, wow, that is really cool. And so what? tell me a little bit about where you find them. Um, and what they like to eat and so on and so forth. Yeah, sure. Uh, this species and about a quarter of our Atlanta uh, amphibian species breed in little puddles. So something you might not even look twice at, a little depression that collects water for hmm. a few weeks or months a year. Uh, you'll, you won't find this species in a stream uh, or in a permanent water body. They mm -hmm. just like these little puddles. <laughs> <laughs> and a quarter of our amphibians use those puddles as well. She is out of here. She's yeah. like, who is this guy? <laughs> and so you find him in little puddles. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what about, uh, you know, along the South Fork Conservancy? Do you see them there as well? You see salamander species there for sure. Now, one thing you, you pointed out was the, how shiny the skin is. Amphibian skin is very sensitive. And amphibians as a group are very sensitive to imbalances in the environment. And that's why they make such a useful monitoring tool for restoration efforts like out the South Fork. So when uh, an area is restored, amphibians are one of the first groups to respond to restoration or imbalances in the environment. My hands are like the salamander um, treadmill. Yeah, exactly. You know, she's going from she's one hand to the She's just going to keep going. I think that means she likes you. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. And so um, let's talk a little bit about what you have on display. I mean, you have several species like on this? display at the uh, garden. Yeah, at the garden. Yeah, we have uh, a pretty large amphibian conservation program there. We have about 300 species, uh, frogs behind the scenes, not oh, cool. species. Yeah, and we have six amphibian displays featuring okay. projects that we've done through the years. So you can go there and see a lot of amphibians uh, on, on display and in the conservatory as well. And why are they so important to, you know, our society and this area that we've been talking about, South Fork Conservancy, what makes them so important? They're a group that's often overlooked, but they are very important. Uh, like I said, they respond to imbalances, like they're uh, a canary in the coal mine in some ways. Okay. And uh, about 40% of the uh, global amphibian community is in catastrophic dis decline or already extinct. Mm. That's a huge number, yeah. 40%. So it's, we need to be paying attention to what that is telling us. The amphibians are trying to give us a message and we need to pay attention. About our ecosystem as a whole? About our ecosystem as a whole. And wow. there are many different documented reasons that are causing this amphibian decline, but habitat loss is the number one. So restoration efforts like this uh, South Fork Conservancy are very, very important, especially in an urban setting. And the spots on the salamander, are they just sort of like a camouflage? This animal lives underground, so I don't know what kind it of camouflage. It stands out, it matches my shirt. So it's beautiful, you. right? I mean, it's, <laughs> she uh, really the spots is. are really... Uh, she uh, really yeah. is. Seems to have a little personality here as well. Want to try again? Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. And so, and they eat bugs and things like that? They eat bugs. Uh, she'll eat worms. Uh, some of the larger salamanders can even eat small rodents. They'll eat anything they can fit in their mouths. Wow. And is this the op optimal size for one? Uh, she get any bigger She's, than this? They can get bigger, but this is this is a big lady right here. Yeah. So tell me a little bit, Mark, about what people in Metro Atlanta can do to help and make a difference so here. So our monitoring program okay. at, at the Botanical Garden, we are training people <laughs> to be able to identify 
amphibian species by sight and sound. So there are a lot of different frog species and they make a lot of racket at night. It's a very useful tool. If you know which species are making which sound, you can identify them and see which uh, animals are occupying a, a habitat. So it's, it's a daunting task. I moved to Atlanta. I had to learn these. So I put all the frogs on my phone as a ringtone. I just alternate through until I learn them. So now what we do is we train people to be able to recognize frogs by call, salamanders by sight. And it helps people to, when they're out at the confluence, mm -hmm. that they can, if they see something, they're going to know what it is. Do you know what I mean? It's a very, it's useful, but it also makes it more exciting to be out in nature because you might have a better chance of understanding what it is you're finding. And, you know, what you didn't see uh, during the commercial break, Mark actually had me use hand sanitizer for the salamander. Usually it's because I've handled a salamander. I probably should use it with my own hands. But yeah. no, no, no you've got to keep the no. salamander clean, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, they're very yeah. susceptible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, even the salts on your hands could be har harmful to the salamander. I see, I but see. But she's doing just fine. Look at her. All right, she's enjoying it. <laughs> Get a workout here. <laughs> like I, I said, the treadmill she... workout. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so very good. So people mm -hmm. can um, reach out. What's the website if they want to learn more about what's being offered at the garden? And you can go directly to the garden's website. We're at the bottom of that website okay. is our frog blog. And you can uh, look up the frog blog or go directly to this program at MAMP, M-A-A-M-P dot frogsneedourhelp.org. I just noticed I was looking very tense just a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the monitor. Now I'm more relaxed. Okay. I don't know why I was so tense. Yeah. Well, I'm nervous. This is she's your first time? Yeah, she is a beauty. <laughs> and um, your email uh, that people, if they have questions, want to volunteer, want to help out? The program works. has its own email, and okay. that is also as MAMP, M-A-A-M-P, at AtlantaBotanicalGarden.org. Mark Mandica. Yeah. And his beauty. Yes. Salamander. Do you have a name for her? No, you have any suggestions? Uh, yellow Daisy? I don't know. I don't yellow know. Daisy. All right. All right. Great job. Thanks for being yeah, on the thank program. You. Thank really you. cool stuff. Uh, hey, there are not only amphibians living along the North and South Fork com confluence, there are birds too. And coming up, the partnership with the Audubon Society and how you can help out right here on Public Affairs on Peach after the break.